Hi, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Style Garage. Today's project is my 2013 Volkswagen Passat TDI. She's marking her territory. She's been uh, dripping oil um, and a little bit of coolant is disappearing. Um, and I think the two are related. The front of the engine blocked down underneath to the oil cool, the oil pan and back has got oil markings on it. Uh, not leaking a ton, but definitely quite a few drips. Very similar thing happened to me two, three years ago, and I had to replace the oil filter housing on the front of the block, which also has the oil cooler in it. I'm afraid that that's what's happening again. Uh, not the best design plastic part, and it tends to leak. Um, so, we're gonna dive into it. It's a pretty in-depth project, and we'll see how it goes. Um, if you, I hope this video helps you if you're doing this project for the first time. I'm trying to make it short and concise, but give the information you need so that you can do it. Uh, if you wanna help me out, hit subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, and uh, thanks for being part of Third Style Garage. In case you're wondering, I really like these cars. I've got two of them. Passat TDI's 2012, 2013, very similar to the 2014's as well. So we removed the intake tube. That goes right here. There are two T25 torque screws that hold that on. There's the plastic tube that goes underneath here. That's this piece um, and these two pieces. Obviously took the top engine cover off as well. Um, underneath, I drained the oil. Um, I had just done an oil change about 100 miles ago, so I cleaned the container really well. Um, drained the oil, kept that. And then I disconnected the coolant line right there by that little coolant pump. And uh, I'm collecting the coolant as well. And then I will strain that and put it back in. While I was under here, disconnected the electrical plug that connects to the two fans. There's a little red tab right here, which you have to pull out. I couldn't go get the plug to come out, so I had to insert a little tiny flathead screwdriver right underneath that point. Uh, but this plug simply pulls out. That's the electrical pigtail for the two fans. And then there are four T30 screws that mount the fans in. If you pull those four screws out, the fans will drop right out the bottom, which gives you a lot more room in here to work. I think my next task is to disconnect that lower hose, take out the intercooler, there's a hose on here, a plug here, uh, and then I'll be able to unbolt it from the bottom of this, and that will give me a whole lot better access to the oil cooler. So the intercooler is out, um, it's not a small step. On the bottom of the intercooler, uh, there are two mounting bolts here that mount to the block. Um, they have two T30 screws that are in them that go to a, uh, this little metal ferrule that goes into this rubber gasket um, that need to come out. Also on the bottom, you will need to disconnect this hose um, somewhere. Um, either here and here, these two places, or you can disconnect it here, but somehow this needs to come loose from the cooling system. And then there's another hose on the top that comes off and a last hose that goes to the radiator. And this is one of those quick wire clips. Uh, a couple of these hoses fought me pretty good. A couple of them came out pretty easily. Um, one hose, sorry, on the side here as well. That's very visible from the top. Uh, the hardest part about it is behind the neck here uh, at the top, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that I could not see. Um, 
So once you get that one out, it comes out pretty easily. Let me set this aside. Sorry, it is hard to show you where this bolt goes. Um, it is that. There is a hole right there that my light is shining on. That is a through hole that goes into a threaded tapped hole on the bottom of the intercooler or the back of the intercooler. So it is right behind this plastic actuator. The next step is to unbolt the oil filter housing from the engine block. There is four bolts, one, two, three, four. You can get to these top two from the top side here. It's a little hard to show where they are on camera. There are two bolts that are going there. Uh, they're a triple square bolt. It's not a Torx, not a metric. Those two come out pretty accessibly. Then you need to get to the underside uh, to get the last two out. Let me show you that. This is where it becomes real handy to have the intercooler out because you can see that I've got a lot of room here. I can see that, it's a little hard on camera. Um, here I've got my socket on one of the triple squares right there. The other one was pretty easy on the other side. Have a pan ready because as soon as you crack these loose, a whole bunch of coolant comes out. And if you're not ready, you get a, a surprise faceful. And then there is one hose that goes on the side of this oil filter housing that needs to come out as well. And then it should come out. To detach, you need to detach the dipstick um, from this throttle body assembly. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. The head is on the lower end of it. Um, not that you're going to take the dipstick out or that you're going to remove this, but a little lower on, on the back side of the oil filter housing, I am see a black piece of plastic right down in the bottom of this hole um, there's a hole there uh, mine is missing the pin but right where the light is shining there's uh, what I call like a, a body panel push pin um, it's the kind where um, you would pull the head out and then the whole pin comes out. Um, doesn't thread in, there's not a bolt head. You can simply need to grab that with a needle nose pliers or with a screwdriver and pry that up. But you will need to do that before you can remove the oil filter housing. Uh, and then when you reinstall it, you can put that pin back in and put this 10 millimeter back in. Wanted to make sure I didn't miss that. Oil filter housing is out. There is the mating surface. Uh, it's a nice steel machine surface. I will uh, scrub that, clean it up. Uh, a little scotch bright, a little brake clean. Make sure that it's uh, clean and dry and ready for the new one to mount on. Um, here's my old one on the bench. Next to the brand new one next to it, you can see that the O-rings sit up higher and on this one they are mushed flat. It's a little disappointed when my previous one failed, some of these walls, plastic walls had crushed and cracked. I don't see any of that happening here. Um, so I really hope this is the source of my oil leak. It seems to be um, where the oil is coming from. This is the last hose that needed to come out. I don't see any evidence of mine leaking against the cooler here. Um, it does seem like the oil is just flowing down this side. So I will uh, probably put a real light coat of oil on this and clean the surface and start bolting it back together. The new oil cooler housing is in. Just a reminder, two bolts in the top two bolts in the bottom 
We've got a hose right on the side here that I need to hook up yet. Um, from what I understand, the torque sequence for those is 14 newton meters, which is about 123 inch pounds on all four of them, and then another 90 degrees, which is surprisingly tight for a plastic housing with an O-ring. Um, but that's what I was told, and that's what I'm doing. Um, the two from the bottom, don't, you know, when you put two in on the top, don't snug them all the way down until you get the bottom ones lined up. And then you can go through the torque sequence. Um, and then I think that reassembly is just going to be the opposite of disassembly. So I'm going to do that project next. And I'll let you know if there's anything tricky about it. If you're really observant and have good eyes, you might be able to see that my bolt there looks really funky. Uh, and that was because the head of mine stripped out. And uh, so I had to grind it out and weld a new head on the end of it and then torque it. So time to start reassembling everything. All right, she's back together. You can hear it running in the background. Uh, reassembly went pretty smoothly. A few of the hoses are a pain in the rear to get on, but you know, you just keep fiddling with that. Um, Absolutely double check everything when you're done. You don't have any screws left over. Fill your oil up, fill up your coolant. I just started it up, so I'm gonna drive for a little while and then get it up to temperature, take my coolant along with me, and then I'll top off the reservoir tank, making sure that uh, the coolant level is right. Look for leaks, watch for drips underneath. Hope for the best. Thanks for being part of Third Style Garage. In case you're wondering, I'm not a, I don't do this full time. It's only the second time I've ever done it. it took me about four, four and a half hours to do it. Actually it took a little bit longer because I wasted an hour on a stripped bolt. Uh, so really about five and a half hours total. Um, I'd say on a scale of one to 10, this job was a seven or eight. It was a little bit, a little bit more of a hassle and a pain, but she's all back together and running well. Hopefully this helps for you. If you have questions, post a comment below. I'll do my best to help you out. Have a great day.